Hi, everybody. Welcome to our live stream. My name is Tiffany Johnson, and I'm here tonight at the Spice and Tea Exchange for the Cave Collective Song and Story. I am just so glad to be here tonight and to be a part of an event showcasing local artists and local businesses. It's just a really, really awesome thing for our community. Um, so I'm going to start off by singing a song that I wrote called Out of My Head. And basically, this is just a song about trying to move on and how sometimes the weirdest, the memories come back at the weirdest times, so. I drove past your house on the way to his last night. An honest mistake, I swear Cause I didn't mean to turn right At the stoplight, I don't know what I was thinking It's moments like these It all comes rushing back Honestly, kind of rude Cause I'm just trying to prove That maybe I'm happier than I was with you but sometimes I still think about us dancing in the living room in the moonlight And how I had to stand on my tippy toes Cause you were so tall, I still remember it all But now his arms hold me, but my mind is still lonely Trying to begin again, but I can't seem to Been hanging out with new faces, hoping to make yours disappear. And my friend said I should be more social. So here I am at this party, but I kind of hate everybody here. It's moments like these, it all comes to rushing back. Honestly, kind of rude. Cause I'm just trying to prove that maybe I'm happier than I was with you But sometimes I still think about us dancing in the living room in the moonlight And how I had to stand on my tippy toes Cause you were so tall, I still remember it all And now his arms hold me, but my mind is still lonely Trying to begin again, but I can't seem to get you out of my head, 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 head. Get you out of my, get you out of my, get you out of my head, get you out of my head, 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 head. But now his arms hold. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. All right, so the next song I'm going to sing, I'm going to tell a little story here. So a lot of times when I write songs, it's, it's pretty late at night. Um, and I remember I was sitting in my room, and it was probably like 10 o'clock at night. And 
I wrote down a list of all these, I don't even know why, but I wrote down a list of all these things that my whole life I've kind of just felt like connected to and things that I just have really kind of been inspired by. And I thought they all kind of had a connection. And the three things I remember writing down were butterflies, sunrises, and like the waves and the ocean. And I realized that all of these things were things that kind of had to go through metamorphosis or things that it was dark before there could be lightness or before there could be a spark, you know. Um, and like butterflies literally are caterpillars and they have to go through metamorphosis to grow their wings and fly. And I've just always loved the idea of things that have to grow and change in order to like become more beautiful. And I think a lot of times in life it's hard to understand why things necessarily happen to us and if we get hurt or get our heart broken. But I really do think that everything happens for a reason and that we learn from things and we grow from things. And I think in the case of this song, what I needed to learn was to be able to take a step back and just be with my emotions and just learn to breathe. So this song is called Breathe. myself it was okay but I couldn't hold back the flood I was the fire was the rain I couldn't take a second just to figure it out and I kept on burying my feelings down I was so quick to point the blame I couldn't listen to what my heart had to say it was a pounding in my lungs that I couldn't escape to learn how to breathe, hi, 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 to learn how to breathe, how to breathe. Falling fast, but I grew brand new wings. I caught the winds, and for the first time, Doesn't feel like my lungs have to scream The thought of you grows away From the thought of me I was the fire, was the rain I couldn't take a second just to figure it out And I kept on burying my feelings down I was so quick to point the blame I couldn't listen to it, my heart had to say it was a pounding in my lungs that I couldn't escape. Hi, 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 hi. To learn how to breathe. Just to figure it out And I stopped burying my feelings down I'm glad to take the blame I had to listen to what my heart had to say It was a fountain in my lungs that I couldn't escape Hi, 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 hi To learn how to breathe Hi, 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 hi To learn
Thank you. I'm going to take a second to tune. Um, so I just released an EP not too long ago, and that was one of the songs off of the EP. Um, so my Instagram and my Spotify and all of that is Tiffany Johnson Sings. Um, it's out on all different platforms, and I also have some upcoming music, so you can follow me on Spotify or on Instagram and Facebook, um, just so you can kind of be the first to hear about all that stuff. But the next song I'm going to sing is actually a song that is currently unreleased, and we just finished recording it. But I remember with this song, um, I really love to go like hiking and exploring old abandoned buildings and things. And I remember me and a couple of friends went to this place called Spokane, um, not Spokane, Washington, the one in the Black Hills. Um, and you walk up and there's just these big abandoned like frames of houses and there's still cars in the driveway. And I remember walking into the house and there was literally layers of wallpaper peeling off and a stove in the corner. And it was like people just kind of got up and left. And I kind of went into a rabbit hole of thinking about what the story could possibly be behind people just leaving. And I kind of started to think about it in terms of a relationship. And I thought about the house, like a relationship and how people, um, once like the gold is gone in the town, once the spark is gone in the relationship, um, it just kind of dies out and there's like nothing for them anymore. So this is called Empty Ground. Isn't it tragic? Isn't it hopeless? It was so perfect until it was broken a shiny new house up on the top of the hill lord knows i was born a stray not the kind of stick around it I'd stick around town but for you i would have stayed for you i would have stayed as we watched the wallpaper peel and the floorboards fall you claim that I gave no signs, but didn't you see what I saw? Cause baby, you were gold, but the gold's run out, and I promised I'd never be a ghost in your town. So maybe I won't stick around, we both know there's nothing in us now. It's left is this empty ground.
Thank you, everybody. I just want to take another second just to say thank you to the Cave Collective um, and the Spice Tea Exchange for hosting this event. Um, this is really awesome, and I'm super glad just to be able to finally share my music again because it's been really weird not getting to perform for people, but it's awesome that we can still kind of be here even if it's virtually, you know? Um, so just thank you. Um, the next song I'm going to sing. This one's called Lemonade, and I released this song as well, and I kind of just wrote it about just a fun summer song, and it was kind of a playoff of the phrase, when life gives you lemons. Um, and in my mind, this situation was like, so life gave me lemons, I was trying to make lemonade, and then I like started to spill the sugar everywhere, and then the lemons kind of went everywhere, and it just kind of got worse as it went on. Um, and so I ended up with the phrase, um, look at the mess I made trying to turn lemons into lemonade. And that's where this song was born. And there's usually a guitar player playing this little riff. So if I just start singing that, that's what that, that's what that is. <laughs> to say I'm not convinced it was supposed to end this way I pushed away the only ones who came I fought for love but was it there Ooh, look at the mess I made trying to turn lemons into lemon cause I like to think I think I've got one more song for y'all tonight. Um, sorry, I have to retune. <laughs> but this song is called Arizona, and I think a lot about like the highs and lows in life, I think. Um, and as much as I love the moments in life that are super high and super just fun, I think sometimes it's hard looking back at those memories that are 
so fun and so amazing when you're not in that peak moment. Um, and I think it makes it harder to move on sometimes, too. It's like, man, that was just such a good time, and you kind of keep reflecting back on it. Um, so that's what this song is about. Let me just make sure I'm in tune. My dark Martin's on the third, and you let me wear your old Rolling Stones t shirt. Cause, man, we thought we had it all swept away by the wind, not afraid of the fall. How it felt just like a dream with the dusky. Thank that you. was incredible. Oh, thank you. That was so cool. Um, 
I'm Natalie LaFrance Lack, and I'm uh, on the board of the Cave Collective and also the founder of Verb Storytelling Collective. And I have to say, you are a storyteller. I am a storyteller. Yeah, for sure. and, which is really cool because um, hearing the stories behind the songs and realizing uh, kind of the emotion and the experience that you have when you were writing those songs makes it that much more personal for the audience. Yeah. So um, that's a skill not everybody has, and I'm super impressed with you at Thank such you. a young age. How old are you? I am 16 years old. Okay, and yeah. are you from here in Rapid City? Yes, I was born and raised in Rapid City, lived here my whole life. Um, I go to Stevens High School, so. Awesome. Do you, was there a moment um, that you can remember where you were like, I'm going to be a singer? When you were little, anything like that? You know, I get this question a lot, and I think my answer is usually, I feel like songwriting and singing was never something I just like decided to do. It was just always a thing I did. And even when I was little, like I'd be playing with my Barbies and I would like make up stories to sing about for their lives. So like it's just, and I'd put on shows with my family, um, play dress up and just like sing. It's just always something I've done. Are your, is your family musical? My dad is musical. My dad's in a band. Um, it's called the Lonely Rangers. So he was kind of a big inspiration for me um, to learn to play guitar and to sing. And I got the opportunity to be on stages from a young age. So it's been awesome. So a lot of people don't have the poise or the confidence that you have. Um, do you have like a process that you go through before you get on stage? Is there something that helps kind of calm you? Or are you just so excited that it doesn't matter? You know, I don't really, I don't know, I don't really have a process. I, yeah, I don't know, I just kind of get ready and show up and make sure I'm prepared. Um, yeah, that's the biggest thing. And then what about like musical influences? Is there people that you remember from when you were very young, now, who do you listen to, where do you draw inspiration? Oh man, it's all over the place. My biggest inspiration has always been Taylor Swift, um, her fashion, her stage presence or storytelling, um, for sure Taylor Swift. And then recently, I've gotten a lot more into like indie music. So I listen to a ton of this band called Hippocampus. Um, I'm a huge fan of Maggie Rogers and Harry Styles. I love Harry Styles. Um, yeah, my music taste is really all over the place. And I also love country artists like Kelsey Ballerini, Dolly Parton, Casey Musgraves. It's just, I love songwriters for the most part, but it's, yeah, music taste is all over the place. <laughs> So people that are here, and obviously we have a really small audience tonight because we're still trying to be safe and socially distanced. Um, are there any questions from the audience, people that have specific questions they want to ask Tiffany? Sure. Okay. So COVID has been kind of hard um, for musicians and artists and the entertainment industry as a whole. Has there been any silver linings for you? Me? No. I can repeat yeah. the question. Um, so the audience member asked, with the challenges of COVID-19 um, and the difficulties with having live performances as a musician, have there been any silver linings in the, the COVID pandemic for you? Yeah. I mean, I've got to spend a ton of time reflecting and writing and really digging into who I am as an artist and what I want to say. And I've gotten to record um, an entire EP, which probably would not have happened if it weren't for COVID, because I just had so much free time to do that. Um, so there has been some silver linings. I really miss performing, but I've gotten a lot done, so. That's awesome. That's a good way to spin a, a rough situation. Yes, as sure. you can. Yeah. Any other questions? Yeah. I would like to know how you think that being raised in the Black Hills has influenced your music and songwriting. Oh, man. That's, yeah. So the question is, how has being raised in the Black Hills influenced Tiffany's songwriting and music? You know, I could answer this a lot of different directions. That's a really good question. Um, but I think for the most part, where you live really shapes who you are and where you grew up and the experiences that you have. and especially that song about ghost towns, obviously. It was like drawn straight from the Black Hills. And there's a ton of different songwriters that I've gotten to see. And Deadwood has hosted a lot of events. And I've gotten to perform a lot because there's a smaller community. I've probably had a lot more opportunity um, to get on stages and get in front of people and just really be a part of a community that's super helpful. And as far as songwriting, there's a ton of influences around here that are more folk. Um, so I think that has influenced my storytelling, for sure. Is this your first time working with the Cape Collective, or have you performed with them before? 
Yes, this is, oh, sorry. You're okay, question. you're good. The question was just, is this <laughs> Tiffany's first time performing with the Cave Collective or, or with an event with the Cave Collective? Yes, it is. I was supposed to do a show with the Iron Mountain Band right when COVID was getting can like came in, and so it got canceled. But I'm super glad to finally be here. So, when for, this is a question for me, but as a performing artist, what is the importance of the local community, the businesses who support you, um, venues or or hosts like the Cave Collective? How does that kind of influence your ability to, like you talked about, perform and? Yeah, it definitely influences for sure the foundation of performing too. And it really is so helpful in the beginning of your career, especially to have a community around you that is supportive and that encourages you to get on stages and performs and gives you opportunities to learn and to grow. And so growing up in the Black Hills and having places like the Cave Collective to play is just super helpful and just a great experience in general. Playing music in other places, right? You've gotten to travel a little bit. Can you tell us about maybe a favorite trip you've done or a place that you've gotten to play somewhere in your career? Yeah, so I traveled to Nashville quite a bit. Um, and also in Nashville, they tell people you need to kind of be as into your community as you can before you kind of try to move to the big city. So you need to be as big a part of your local community and perform as much as you can locally before you go to the bigger cities. You know, you kind of got to be a bigger fish before you... Or the giant pond is what they say. But um, one of my favorite places I performed in Nashville is probably the Bluebird Cafe, just because it's so like historical. Um, and just the entire experience was magical, and you could feel the musical presence there. So that was definitely a highlight for me. Um, other questions? Anybody else out there have questions for Tiffany? Really quick while you think, I do want to remind you that you can look up Tiffany Johnson Sings on Instagram and on Spotify and other music platforms. Um, and also that tonight, since uh, we were unable to sell tickets to this event, we do encourage that if you enjoyed the live stream that you Venmo uh, a tip to our artist, Tiffany. And um, it's Tiffany Sings 29. 29. Yeah. Tiffany Sings 29. She is not 29 years old. She's just 16 years old, but she's here with us today. <laughs> Tiffany Sings. 29 on Venmo. Do we have any other questions? <laughs> okay, I've got, what is your favorite song to cover? If you were gonna cover a song, what do you just love to belt out and sing? Currently, it's Dreams by Fleetwood Mac. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say, can we just get a little of that action, right? Um, awesome, very, very cool. Um, other questions? Yeah, Tiffany, what is your favorite song? What would you tell somebody who's you know, you told me earlier tonight that you started kind of seriously thinking about writing songs at about eight years old. Yeah. <laughs> and kind of the craft of songwriting and things like that. So um, there are probably younger girls, I mean, you're young, but there are younger girls who look at what you've already achieved at 16 years old and they think, my gosh, how did she do it? How would you encourage or what would you say to those younger people that are starting to think about music and expressing themselves? I think my biggest piece of advice is to just keep showing up just show up places and just show up for people and just keep getting your name out there and always be prepared. Because the biggest like gigs and events that I've ever gotten, I got a call for like the day before. And they're like, hey, we need somebody and I'm prepared. So I kind of got opportunities through always showing up and just being prepared. Yep, <laughs> for sure. One of the things that I noticed through several of the stories that you told and the music that you sang um, was this idea of sort of silver linings or taking difficult situations and growing and learning. Um, and yet at the same time, people could see what you've done and say she's had it really easy or people have really been supportive and you've even spoken to that encouragement. Um, what is something that anybody could do to kind of encourage themselves when they're in a downtime? Like what would you draw from? Is that faith for you? Is that other musicians and artists? Is that family? Where do you draw some of that strength? Yeah, I think all of the above. Um, I think a big thing I learned during the kind of lockdown time in COVID was to just really, I mean, this is going to kind of sound weird, but just be optimistic about things. Like, and I started this thing called manifestation. Um, and it's basically just about looking at the positives in life and kind of foreseeing in your future, like what you want your life to be like. And it's honestly like taking goals, um, setting goals and taking steps towards that. And so I started doing that and 
I started spending more time with my family and with my friends and really focusing on the people in my life that were good and that were there for me. Um, I don't know if that answered your question, but. I think that's really helpful. Um, do we have any other questions before we finish up with Tiffany tonight? Where was the first place you performed? So the question was, where was the first place that Tiffany ever performed? The first place, um, I want to say the Dolphin Arts Center, I think, at their open mic. And then I also, they used to have this thing called Black Hills Idol. And I was like seven years old singing Taylor Swift karaoke songs for that, so. Okay. Good question. Yeah, we've had good questions. <laughs> so what is your ultimate goal? The question is, what is your ultimate goal? Oh man, I mean, I just want to make music and be able to tour around the world and sing for people and touch people and really kind of speak for the people that don't know how to put into words what they're feeling, I feel like, because I really look to music when I am feeling sad or just want to relate to something. Um, so I just really hope I can do that for other people. And um, dream-wise, I would love to be able to have like world tours and win Grammys and things, but I really just want to be able to reach people with my music. This isn't a question, but I would like to tell you that you definitely hit heartstrings in my heart. <laughs> oh, yeah. Just so you know that, so I just wanted to say that. That means a lot, thank you. You're welcome. I think that there was a level of wisdom and experience that's sort of um, unexpected from an artist or age. And I think that's it's really admirable because I think sometimes people can tend to look down on young people and think that their message maybe isn't as important or it doesn't matter. And I think one of the goals of the K Collective has been to really elevate young people's voices in the music community, in activism and community involvement. And that's certainly our hope um, at the Cave is to really kind of bring young artists and people who maybe aren't as far on their journey even as you are and give them a platform to get involved with their community. So. Uh, tonight's event here in an unlikely venue at the Spice and Tea Exchange at this beautiful place and surrounded by uh, good people, socially distanced and safe. We just are really grateful for your time and being part of this. Yeah, thank you too, um, so much. And then I want to invite uh, Dexter, who is uh, the, the president of the Cape Collective, and Dustin, if you want to come up at all and maybe share some things with us as well. Um, uh, let's give Tiffany one more round of applause, though. So I just want to say once again, thank you so much, Tiffany. That was an incredible performance. Um, let's give a little more round of applause, everybody, from home and here. Yeah, go ahead, man. So uh, we hate to end the stream here on a bummer, but tonight we lost a very important member of not only the Cave Collective community, but somebody that has been in the Black Hills Rapid City uh, music um, community for <laughs> as long as I can remember as a kid. Uh, today we've lost Caleb, um, again, a very important member of the music community, and we just want to take a moment of silence on the stream tonight for him. Um, he, you may know him. He was the bass player of Defect and had played in other bands throughout, you know, his history and stuff. So we're going to take a moment of silence for him right now to end the stream. And we thank you all for tuning in tonight for Tiffany Johnson. We love you, Caleb.
Corey Anderson will be next week at Gallery 613. Thank you all so much for tuning in tonight. Have a good night.